Shabbat Shalom, my friends. A special shout out to those who have just recently joined our weekly Torah conversation. We are honored and very happy that you have chosen to be part of this special community. Please post your thoughts and reactions for all of us to enjoy. I would normally have inserted here a prayer for all of those who suffered such horrible losses this week in the Florida school shooting, but, but prayer won't develop the mental health resources needed to enhance our capacity to heal those suffering from severe mental disorders, and prayer won't diminish the power of the NRA to prevent a desperately needed national conversation. Only an energized, outraged, fearful but not paralyzed public can achieve those goals. The responsibility is ours. Okay, to our text, Truma, Exodus 25, 1. In modern Hebrew, litrom, the word truma, litrom is to donate. A truma is a donation, a torem is a donor, and we love tormim, right? The root meaning of the word is resh vav mem, to lift up a gesture of giving in support of a sacred or otherwise worthy project. Presenting a truma, a gift, is therefore a sacred act of worship. Last week we read about one kind of construction, the construction of a moral society. We had laws about sexual behavior, laws about court systems, capital crimes, capital punishment, and laws. You remember this about the Eved Ivri, the Hebrew slave. This week, we focus on actual physical construction, the building of a tabernacle that will contain within it an outer court where sacrifices are to be offered, and the Holy of Holies, Kodesh Kodeshim, which will contain the Ark of the Covenant and the tablets upon which God had inscribed the Ten Commandments. A building project. Now, what does every building project require? A capital campaign, of course, and maybe even a bronze plaque uh, listing the donors for all to see. I remember the first time that recent I visited that magnificent mosaic tile synagogue floor in Beit Alpha in Israel. At the very bottom margin of that wondrous mosaic, there it was, a 2,000-year-old thanks to the donor. Nothing changes. So Adonai commanded Moses, tell the Israelite people to bring me gifts. You shall accept gifts for me from every person I share yid venu libo whose heart moves them to give. Now, I've run many capital campaigns in the past, and truth be told, we never once required of a potential donor that their contributions be made wholeheartedly out of a deep love for the project. Generous gifts were always welcome, no matter what the motivation, unless, of course, the gifts were an attempt to disguise or to launder unsavory behavior on the part of the potential donor. And yes, I've dealt with circumstances like that as well, but that's another story for another day. Let's look at some of the elements of the command to build a mikdash, a, a sanctuary, a sacred place. The design of the mikdash is laid out in painstaking detail in our text reflecting a design that, according to the rabbis, originated in heaven. God is the supreme architect. The sacred places that we have here on earth are considered duplicates of the sacred places in heaven. Think again of last week's Torah conversation. Acting in imitation of what believe, we believe God to be doing is the most exalted form of serving Adonai. God is to be worshipped with hod and hadar, with beauty and majesty. Just as the angels serve God with glory on high, so the Israelites are to build with hod and hadar 
glory and majesty down here. But wait, we have a problem. Not that long ago, the text had told us that Adonai wanted a plain, simple sanctuary and altar. And now, everything's to be covered with gold? Why this dramatic change? Easy, say the rabbis. That was before the people showed themselves to be in need of a high-gloss object connected with divine worship. And when did the Israelites display such a need? Oh, when the people demanded that Aaron make for them a golden calf. The glittering Mikdash and altar were meant to be glorious, just like the golden calf. But in this case, the glorious object is to be dedicated to Adonai. Hold on. Whoops. One small problem. The incident of the golden calf hasn't happened yet. We won't read the account of the golden calf until chapter 32 of the book of Exodus. And this week we are only on chapter 25. So now it's time for us to learn a principle of biblical interpretation. Ein mukdam umuchar by Torah. There's no strict chronology in the Torah. Just because one thing is read before another thing, that doesn't mean that it actually came before it. The command to build a beautifully adorned mikdash preceded the story of the golden calf. But it nevertheless was precipitated by it. Now that approach may not be easily embraced by those of us who still hold on to Aristotelian logic. But it does accurately reflect some of the contortions that must exist for us to accept Torah seamlessly as the divinely revealed word of Adonai. One final item to be cherry-picked out of our very rich text. When building the Aron, the Ark, it is to be overlaid with gold outside and inside. No one, at least no human being, will ever see the inside of that Aron. But it is still to be overlaid with gold inside and out. Strange. That's really quite excessive, isn't it? Quite extravagant. So there must be a deeper reason than just ostentation here. Surely the Aron is not intended to be a Kardashian object. Our teachers came up with a beautiful lesson. Any scholar who is not the same kind of person in private as in public is not a true scholar. What an incredibly high standard. You can never be an acceptable leader for the Jewish people if your act, your what, external activities, do not match up with your private values. The Hebrew phrase, a wonderful Hebrew phrase, learn it here, is tocho kavoro. Her outer self accurately reflects her inner self. Tocho kavoro. Gold on the outside, gold on the inside. And someone who fails to meet this standard bears the ugly and demeaning title of hypocrite. The Hebrew word for hypocrite is tzavua. It comes from tseva, which means a, a color. Tzavua means that someone, someone who covers over her true intent with the paint of deception. You can't be a trustworthy person if you are a tzavua. You can't be a servant of God if you are a tzavua. You can't even be a good friend if you are a tzavua. The Aron, the Holy Ark, cannot show one face to the world and have another hidden face that no one will be able to glimpse. Tocho kavoro. And we, human beings, are no different. The hypocrite has no standing in the midst of a covenantal people. A rabbi without personal ethics 
is no rabbi. A friend without personal ethics is no friend. Well, that's it for now. We learned two very important Hebrew phrases today. En mukdam umuhar batorah, no chronology in Torah, and tocho kavoro. Let your outside and your inside reflect the same values. At the end of the day, I'll take sincerity and integrity over chronological order any time. So have, have a great Shabbat. And please, please, please hit share so that others might be invited in to join us. Have a great Shabbat and a great work week. See you next week.